good morning to one and all welcome to my next video lecture on the topic determination of hardness by edta method so before discussing the procedure and the calculation let us move to the basics on again about this particular titration the name of method of the titration is edta method then there is a question may be asked why this titration is known as or this method is known as EDTA method. The reason is that here the titrant used is EDTA. What stands for EDTA? EDTA stands for ethylene diamine tetra acetic acid. So we know that it's a chelate which means it, it's a hexad and deadly cat. So, we are using titrant as this EDTA. That's why we are saying that this method is known as um, EDTA method. Okay. And the name of titration is complexometric titration. Name of titration is complexometric titration. Because this um, during this titration, there is a number of complexes are formed. One complex is formed by combining it with the EDTA and it's known as stable complex. And another complex is formed also due to the combining it with the EBT that is areochrome black tea. It's the indicator. So there is a number of complexes are formed between the titrations. That's why this titration is known as complexometric titration. Then the end point color change of the titration from wine red to blue. Okay. Yes, this is the equations uh, involved in this titration. Every titration, this is the uh, calcium Mg2 plus ion. The, that is the uh, any cations. In this example, I am taking calcium and magnesium ions because in hard water, that is mainly caused by calcium, magnesium or heavy metals ions. Or yeah, we can write this equation by substituting any cation which cause hardness. And first of all, we have to add this before titration, we are adding a small amount of this uh, indicator, which is the indicator that is areochrome black tea. Then this, uh, when this EBT or areochrome black tea is added to this, it will form a complex that is calcium 2 plus Mg2 plus EBT complex. But there is a condition for that. For the formation of this particular complex, there should be the presence of a pH that lies between 8 to 10, which means the entire titration is carried out in the basic pH that is between 8 to 10. For maintaining that pH, we are adding a f the suitable amount of ammonium buffer, which is composed of ammonium chloride and ammonium hydroxide. So, we are adding a suitable amount of this ammonium buffer to this. So, in due to the presence of that, this uh, areochrome black tea will combine with the cation form a complex. And that complex having a color, white color. Then we are carried out in this titration. The titrant is EDTA, that is ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid. By the addition of each drop of EDTA to this complex, what will be happen that EDTA is a hexadendent ligand, which means at a time it can form six bonds. EBT is a monodendent ligand, so six bonds at a time or single bond at a time, which is more stable. Yeah, with, without any doubt, we can say that EDTA is the stable complex compound or the ligand. So, when this EDTA came or react with this, this complex, that is unstable complex, that EBT will be ejected from that. That's why this uh, complex is, when this EDTA came, this complex get break. That's why this complex is known as unstable complex. Okay, so when this EDTA came to this, the tit or during titrations, this EBT will be ejected. So, uh, the, it will form this EDTA form a stable complex. So, um, at the end point, the all the EBT will be eliminated and will form the most stable complex. By the after the end point, the next, the very next drop of EB, EDTA combined with the EBT form a blue color complex. So, whenever be this blue color formed, we can see that that is due to the presence of or the formation of EBT EDTA compound. So, we can see that the color change of the titration should be from white red to blue. That's about the equations.
So let us move to the procedure. I uh, say that this is a, a titration. So what do you mean? You know what you mean by titration. Titration is a qualitative method. Sorry, quantitative method for the estimation of a particular amount of a particular solution. So most of the pro uh, titration contain three steps. Which are the three steps? Anybody? Yeah. The first step is the preparation of standard solution. Second step is the estimate, uh, the standardization of the titan. Third one is the estimation of the component. So let us move. What are the importance of these both three steps? The first step is the preparation of standard solution. Which means we are estimating the concentration of an unknown component. Only um, we are carried out in, we are find out in the concentration of an unknown component by uh, uh, we can say we um, one concentration value should be known for us. And uh, some, uh, I think that you are familiar with the primary standard and the secondary standard. These are the concepts which is which you learn in your plus one plus two. Primary standard solves are the standard solves uh, which can be used for the determination of concentration of a particular component directly from the weight. So, angana yulla weighting ninna concentration kandu pudikyan patunna uri salt. And that salt that we consider as the primary standard and we are make up that constant or a particular accurately weighed salt into a solution. So, so we can see that or we can calculate the exact concentration of that particular solution. So by using that standard solution or if you are taking a constant volume of this um, solution and uh, um, constant uh, its concentration value is known as then by after the titration we will get the volume of titrant. So by using this uh, N1 V1 or something like concentration into volume it is equal to concentration into volume of other. So using that equation we can easily calculate the volume or sorry the concentration of an unknown parameter. So that is the basic principle or the basic technique behind these titrations. So the first technique is the preparation of the standard salt. So, so uh, for that we are uh, we are taking a standard salt, a primary standard salt, and we are making that in estim in the standardization means we are estimating the concentration of the um, titrant using the standard solution which we make. And estimation part, we are we know the concentration of the volume, sorry, the titrant. Then using that concentration, we are estimating the concentration of the unknown solution. So that's the flow chart. So here, let us discuss this the three procedure. The first, we know that the first step is the preparation of standard hard water. This is the procedure. Once again, I read it. That is one gram of pure dry calcium carbonate is weighed accurately and it is dissolved in minimum quantity of dilute HCl and evaporated dryness in a china dish. The residue is dissolved in distilled water and made up to 1000 ml in a standard flask. Then each ml of the solution will contain 1 ml of calcium carbonate equivalent hardness. Did you get anything? I think that no. It's very simple. Did you see that? Which is the standard um, solution or the standard salt? That is calcium carbonate. Did you familiar with that term calcium carbonate or do you know what do you mean by calcium carbonate? Yeah, it's the material which is present in the marble or the shells. Is it soluble, directly soluble in what? Uh, no. So that is why I am saying that. This calcium carbonate cannot be dissolved in this um, dilute um, water. Because um, then there is an another question may be as to why we choose calcium carbonate as the standard material. I think that I discussed these points in be before the in my previous lecture. Because its molecular weight is 100, its equivalent weight is uh, 50. So it's very easy for the calculation. And also it is easily be removed. That's why we are taking this calcium carbonate, the standard salt. So the procedure is like this. First of all, we are accurately weighed this calcium carbonate. In this procedure, I take uh, 1 gram of accurately weighed calcium carbonate. Then it is, there's no dissolved in water. So, we do, but we need to dissolve it. 
So for that we are doing the procedure that is the accurately weighed calcium carbonate is dissolved in minimum quantity of dilute HCl which is taken in the china dish which is normally the china dish accurately weighed in the calcium carbonate in the china dish then what will happen that but due to this existence of the dilute HCl this calcium carbonate get dissolved this calcium carbonate in the dissolve dissolve it in the bottom this solution is salt and gets get into a soluble form. Okay, then that is the, the minimum quantity of radio teacher. Then the, uh, it is evaporate to dryness in the chain addition. Not a just heat it. And heat it even the bottom, this dilute HC will be escaped. Or we get a powder that is residue. And that residue is easily soluble in water. Calcium carbonate directly is soluble water is soluble to get easily soluble in the calcium carbonate dilute is soluble in the calcium carbonate heat is dry and easy to dissolve so that residue is dissolved in the distilled water and made up to 1000 ml in the standard flask ok one will procedure one gram calcium carbonate that is accurately weigh that minimum quantity of dilute is here dissolve here or china dish let it evaporate here now put it more than 1000 ml like a makeup here so we can see that one ml of or each ml of solution contain one ml of calcium carbonate require a hardness i will explain it in detail this is the calculation part so did you see that uh, i take uh, one gram of i can say that this solution contain one gram of calcium carbonate one liter solution is it right yes because we are making made up to thousand ml okay so i can see that this thousand mg of calcium carbonate so i am converting this gram into milligram and liter into milliliter so thousand milligram of calcium carbonate in thousand ml of solution so i can say that this one mg of calcium carbonate is one ml of solution that is the I consider it as the concentration. What do you mean by concentration? According to the tenth class or SSLC, para uh, definition under concentration is the amount of substance present in a unit volume. Or unit volume till present chayidi quantity of substance in the amount in a vali kena peera ana concentration so I concentration of standard hard water na parangirikkunna njan ende solution 1000 ml solution I equally divide cheyana 1000 parts aayittu angana anil oru part la 1 mg of calcium carbonate because this is a solution all part contain same amount of solute so every time anengil ini concentration of standard hard water nu kandu kanya appo thane ningal endu edikkonam 1 mg where one concentration of SHW is equal to concentration of standard hard water. In the very problem, you can question it on the one gram in the very question on the gun or three gram the running calculation of the matam. But how this three gram of calcium carbonate in one liter ethrean on the other that is a milligram like you convert here one ml ethrean on the under the gap and we have to note that it is the concentration of standard hard water that is SHW standard hard water. Okay. After getting the um, concentration of standard hard water, that is the preparation of standard hard water process, step is over. Let us move to the next step that is the uh, standardization of the EDTA solution because the EDTA is the titan. For that, uh, the procedure is simple. So, the burette is filled with the EDTA solution because EDTA is the titan. Then, 50 ml of the standard hard water, which is the standard hard water, number three, number three, that is the, uh, the accurately veiled CSEO3 solution is known as standard hard water solution which is prepared out into a conical flask. So the volume of uh, uh, standard hard water prepared out is 50 ml. <coughs> and um, to that 10 to 15 ml of buffer is solution is added. Why? For what? Because this titration is taking place in the pH of 8 to 10. Which is the buffer? Ammonium buffer solution. And to that, 4 to 5 drops of EBT is added. What do you mean by EBT? Yeah, EBT is Ereochrome Black Tea. What's the function? It is the titrant. So, if you add this EBT and ammonium buffer to the conic flask containing standard hard water, the solution color becomes wine red. When this titration is taking place this by, by the addition of EDTA, this wine red color changes to blue color. 
so and we know the volume uh, the volume of edta as v of edta so volume of edta is v of edta volume of standard hard water is equal to v of standard hard water we know that that is 50 ml concentration of edta that is uncertain namaku ariyathilla that is i note it as concentration of edta and the concentration of standard hard water i note it as concentration of standard hard water namlu ithirumbu kandupidichu its value is equal to 1 mg of cso3 in 1 ml of solution very simple solution okay so um, we know that this is a basic equation uh, volume into concentration is equal to volume into concentration that is the basic principle or the equation behind every titration so we know that concentration of standard hard water into volume of standard hard water is equal to concentration of edta into volume of edta from that we need to calculate concentration of edta what is the equation yeah uh, by taking uh, by ibada ee sana ibada nirthiyittu this volume of edta taken to here we will get the concentration of standard hard water into volume of standard hard water divided by volume of edta that is a simple equation just substitute the values concentration of standard hard water we know that that is 1 and volume of standard hard water that is equal to 50 volume of edta we don't know this namaku i explain some time but here we take as common that is v of edta we will get 50 of uh, 50 by v of edta so that's all let us ipo namaku endine concentration of edta here let us move to the concern estimation part that is the estimation of total hardness procedure are same നിങ്ങൾ ആ എന്ത് ചേഞ്ചസ് ആണ് വരുന്നതെന്ന് മാത്രം നോക്കിയാൽ മതി ഓക്കെ ദിസ് ഈസ് ദ ഫസ്റ്റ് ഓഫ് ഓൾ ദിസ് ബ്യൂറിറ്റി ഈസ് ഫിൽഡ് വിത്ത് എ ഡി ടി എ സൊല്യൂഷൻ സെയിം മസ് ഫോർ സെയിം ഫോർ ദ സ്റ്റാൻഡൈസേഷൻ ഫിഫ്റ്റി എം എൽ ഓഫ് ഹാർഡ് വാട്ടർ ഈസ് പിപ്പിറ്റഡ് വിച്ച് ഇസ് ദ ഹാർഡ് വാട്ടർ യാ ഈ ദിസ് ഹാർഡ് വാട്ടർ മീൻസ് ദ സാമ്പിൾ വാട്ടർ സ്റ്റാൻഡേർഡ് ഹാർഡ് വാട്ടർ മീൻസ് ദ കാൽസ്യം കാർബണൈസ് സൊല്യൂഷൻ ഹാർഡ് വാട്ടർ മീൻസ് അവർ സൊല്യൂഷനോട് ദ സാമ്പിൾ സൊല്യൂഷൻ ഈസ് പിപ്പിറ്റഡ് ഓക്കെ ദാറ്റ് സൊല്യൂഷൻ ഫിഫ്റ്റി എം എൽ എസ് പിപ്പറ്റഡ് ഔട്ട് മറ്റൊരു തൊറ്റ വ്യത്യാസമുള്ളൂ അവിടെ നമ്മൾ ഇൻ എസ്റ്റിമേ ഇൻ സ്റ്റാൻഡേർഡൈസേഷൻ വി ആർ യൂസ് ഫിഫ്റ്റി എം എൽ ഓഫ് കാൽസ്യം കാർബഡേ സ്റ്റാൻഡേർഡ് ഹാർഡ് വാട്ടർ ഇൻ ദിസ് ഫിഫ്റ്റി എം എൽ ഓഫ് ഹാർഡ് വാട്ടർ ഈസ് പിപ്പറ്റഡ് ഔട്ട് ഇൻ കോണിക്ക ഫ്ലാസ്ക് സെയിം പ്രൊസീജിയർ ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് ടെൻ ടു ഫിഫ്റ്റീൻ എം എൽ ഓഫ് ബഫർ അത് ഈസ് അമോണിയം ബഫർ ഈസ് ആഡഡ് ആൻഡ് ഫോർ ടു ഫൈവ് ഡ്രോപ്സ് ഓഫ് ഇ ബി ടി സാഡഡ് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് ദൻ ടൈറ്റ്റേറ്റഡ് അഗെയിൻസ്റ്റ് ഇ ഡി ടി എ സൊല്യൂഷൻ ടിൽ ദ വൈറ്റഡ് കളർ ചേഞ്ച് ഇറ്റ് ബ്ലൂ കളർ calculation is also simple what is the calculation volume of edta consumed that is equal to v of edta is equal to v2 ml why nammal nerthu v of edta nu mathra eludiyullo because but nammal v2 nu eludan kaaranam in standardization you see in edta de amount aayirikkilla estimation because we in standardization we are titrating uh, this uh, standard hard water or calcium carbonate solution with edta in estimation we are estimating the same edta with the sample hard water randilulla components vyathasam undu so if the components are different then the volume consumption also different that's why this volume volume of edta consumed the, that is v2 ml volume of sample hard water namlu same thing yana for uh, for we make the calculation cc that is 50 ml concentration of edta through namlu kandupidichu that is 50 by v of edta concentration of hard water we don't know that is i represent as c of hw what about the next equation we know that that is concentration of hw into um, volume of hw that is hard water is equal to concentration of edta into volume of edta from that we need to calculate the concentration of hard water how concentration of edta into volume of edta divided by con volume of hard water very simple concentration of edta we know that that is 50 by v of edta into volume of edta in this titration that is v2 divided by volume of hard water is equal to 50 50 50 get cancelled we get v2 by v of edta mg of coco3 equals because we are estimating we are saying this uh, concentration in terms of coco3 equals namle thirumbu padichirunnu because calcium carbonate is the uh standard salt because the calculation is in the karyam like padichirunnu so from that uh, this is the uh, concentration of hard water which means 1 ml il endu mathram hardness causing substance und which is equivalent to calcium carbonate adana uddeshikkunnu we need to we don't we don't know the we don't need the need the concentration or the 1 ml il ulla component alavalla kandupidikkunnu we need to calculate the concentration of hardness causing substance is 1 ml വൺ സോറി വൺ ലിറ്റർ വൺ എം എൽ നമുക്കറിയാം വൺ ലിറ്റർ കണ്ടുപിടിക്കാൻ വേണ്ടി എന്ത് ചെയ്താൽ മതി
multiply the value into 1000 so total hardness is equal to v2 by v edta into 1000 mg bar n which is also known as pp okay i think that you are clear with that next we are moving to the permanent hardness permanent hardness in the we in this previous step we estimate total hardness in this we are estimating permanent hardness so we know that logically thinking we know that total hardness is the sum of permanent hardness and a temporary hardness so if we have total hardness permanent hardness we just neglect or we have to remove the temporary hardness a procedure on the same procedure is something different first of all you have to take 250 ml of the sample water that is unknown sample water then phrase what you know same total hardness on the base of the same hard water is taken in 250 ml and this is boiled in a beaker till volume is reduced to 50 ml the barna you don't have the mill sample at the number of the name number the mill so by the detection of this 200 ml at the same time this temporary hardness causing substance get dip maybe jet maybe it uh, become deposited or maybe some carbon dioxide molecules will be eliminated so by this process all bicarbonates present will be decomposed into carbonates and hydroxides of calcium and magnesium or heavy metals then that water is filtered and the filtrate is made up to 250 ml with the distilled water. The water is filtered and the filtrate is made up to 250 ml with the distilled water. The water is filtered and the filtrate is made up to 250 ml with the distilled water. The water is filtered and the filtrate is made up to 250 ml with the distilled water. The water is filtered and the filtrate is made up to 250 ml with the distilled water. The water is filtered and the filtrate is made up to 250 ml with the distilled water. So, just make up the solution into 250 ml. But you have to use distilled water because distilled water does not contain any cation or anion. Okay, next we are moving to the next step. Next step is filtration. Filtration is something different. 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 Once again, I'm praying. First of all, you have to take 250 ml of the sample water, and uh, um, it is reduced to 50 ml by boiling. Then it is filtered, and uh, by uh, so from that uh, all the decomposed uh, carbonates and the decarbonates or the temporary hardness causing substance get eliminated. Then the obtained filtrate is made up to 250 ml to make the volumes equal. From that, 50 ml of the water is taken and titrated against. EDTA solution and the volume of EDTA in this titration is V3 ml. So the calculation is very simple. Volume of EDTA consumed is equal to V of EDTA that is equal to V3 ml. We know that. Volume of boiled hard water. Number of the end of the middle of the year for titration we taking only 50 ml. Concentration of EDTA that is in throughout the concentration titration that is same that is 50 by V of EDTA. We need to calculate the concentration of boiled hard water. What is the equation for that? Concentration of boiled hard water into volume of boiled hard water is equal to concentration of EDTA into volume of EDTA. From that we need to calculate concentration of boiled hard water. Equation concentration of EDTA into volume of EDTA divided by volume of boiled hard water. Substitute the values you will get V3 of by EDT, EDTA. Now substitute the value. Then, then we need to calculate the temporary hardness again. We will eliminate it. So, the obtained result from that we can calculate permanent hardness by multiplying it with 1000. So, we know the temporary hardness. Sorry, we need the total hardness. We need the temp permanent hardness. From that difference we can calculate temporary hardness. So, the equation is temporary hardness is equal to total hardness minus permanent hardness. So, very simple. Once again, I just turn the quick review on the one. Simple on. First of all, you have to take a constant quantity of this standard calcium carbonate. Make up to other minimum quantity of HCl at that other make up here. And dilute HCl at that other we end up boil at that residue again. Matter it is dissolved in one liter solution. Our solution in the 50 ml at that then it is titrated against EDTA by adding suitable amount that is 10 to 15 ml of buffer and five to four to five drops of EBT. Color change should be from white to blue. 
ദെൻ അവിടെ നിന്ന് നമുക്ക് കോൺസെൻട്രേഷൻ ഓഫ് ഇ ഡി ടി കിട്ടും ദെൻ വി ആർ മൂവിംഗ് ഫോർ ദ നെക്സ്റ്റ് എസ്റ്റിമേഷൻ പാർട്ട് ഓഫ് ടോട്ടർ ഹാർഡ്നെസ് ഫോർ ദാറ്റ് വി ആർ ടേക്കിംഗ് ദ ഹാർഡ് വാട്ടർ സാമ്പിൾ അതും ഫിഫ്റ്റി എം എൽ എടുക്കുന്നു ടൈറ്റ്രേഷൻ സെയിം പ്രൊസീജ് ചെയ്യാം ഫ്രം ദാറ്റ് വി നം വി ഗെറ്റ് ദ കോൺസെൻട്രേഷൻ ഓഫ് ഹാർഡ് വാട്ടർ ബൈ മൾട്ടിപ്ലൈങ് ദാറ്റ് വാല്യൂ ഇൻ ടു തൗസൻഡ് വി വിൽ ഗെറ്റ് ടോട്ടൽ ഹാർഡ്നെസ് ദൻ ദ യൂണിറ്റ് ഈസ് പി പി എം then uh, we have to remove all the temporary hardness for that we are taking another adhe uh, sample inda thane vera to 50 ml edukunu then it is boiled and reduced it to 50 ml appo endu vettum all the tem, uh, temporary hardness causing substance get eliminated or we can easily be removed by filtering it then the filtrate is made up to 250 ml then from that 50 ml is taken and titration taking place then from that concentration of uh, boiled hard water will be obtained <coughs> uh, from that uh, we can calculate permanent hardness by the difference of total and permanent hardness we will get the temporary hardness dear students this is a must question this is a sure question for the university cost examination so uh, if a question is asked to derive what about the procedure or how can you determine the concentration of permanent total and temporary hardness of a hard water in the jodhi chenna you have to explain all these things with concentrate with calculation i hope you all understand it i all got the points have a nice day